Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a heavy heart that we bring you the latest updates from the ongoing and intensifying conflict in the Amhara region. As you may be aware, a brutal battle is being waged between the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, ENDF, and the Amhara Fano Forces. The latest information we've received from the front lines is deeply concerning, and I want to take this opportunity to provide you with a comprehensive overview of the situation. The heart of the conflict remains in the Berehe Woreda and its surrounding areas, where both sides are locked in fierce combat. The Fano forces claim to have inflicted significant casualties upon the ANDF, especially in the Berehe Woreda. What has come to our attention is the shift in military tactics employed by the Ethiopian army. Faced with substantial losses on the ground, they have turned to the use of drones to target the Fano soldiers' positions. This marks a significant escalation in the conflict as it introduces aerial warfare into the already chaotic theatre. In the most recent reports from Fano sources, it has been revealed that on the fifth day of the war in the Berehe Woreda and its surrounding areas, the Ethiopian army, unable to withstand the advances of the Fano forces, has resorted to extreme measures. These measures involve the use of drones and warplanes to conduct airstrikes, resulting in horrifying consequences for the residents of Bulga Berehe. It is with great sorrow that we inform you that, according to these reports, 28 innocent civilians have lost their lives, and the destruction of livelihoods is extensive. Crops have been scorched and homes have been reduced to ashes due to these drone strikes. Shockingly, it appears that the ENDF is continuing its drone strikes in these affected areas, causing more devastation and suffering. In another significant and disconcerting development, we have received updates regarding an NDF convoy that was en route from Bahirdar to Adet via the A3 highway. This convoy, comprising six trucks, two armoured vehicles and two pickups, was ambushed and destroyed by Fano forces situated between Sebatamit and Wandata. This marks a substantial loss for the Ethiopian army. It's crucial to note that a secondary Fano group has formed as a result of the considerable amount of war equipment captured from the ENDF. This development further complicates the already intricate web of conflict dynamics. As an emerging update, it has been reported that local farmers and youths, likely affected by the ongoing strife, have chosen to align themselves with Fano in opposition to the ENDF. This collective effort has resulted in successful resistance against the ENDF's advances, signifying a shift in the balance of power in the region. The situation on the ground remains fluid and volatile, with civilians bearing the brunt of the violence. As an emerging update, it has been reported that local farmers and youths, likely affected by the ongoing strife, have chosen to align themselves with Fano in opposition to the ENDF. This collective effort has resulted in successful resistance against the ENDF's advances, signifying a shift in the balance of power in the region. The situation on the ground remains fluid and volatile, with civilians bearing the brunt of the violence. Beyond the ongoing conflict and military engagements in the region, there is another significant and complex matter that has arisen which demands our attention. Eritrea, in a robust response, has voiced its objections to Ethiopia's pursuit of access to the sea, labelling the discourse as excessive. Earlier today, the Eritrean government issued an official statement addressing the recent discussions and official talks regarding landlocked Ethiopia's access to the sea. The statement released through Eritrea's Ministry of Information conveys a sense of frustration with the heightened rhetoric surrounding this issue. In no uncertain terms, Eritrea expressed its concerns, stating, Discourses, both actual and presumed, on water, access to the sea, and related topics floated in recent times are numerous and excessive indeed. 
This suggests that Eritrea perceives the ongoing dialogue on this topic as not only extensive, but possibly unwarranted. Eritrea's government went on to emphasize that this matter has left both local and international observers perplexed, underlining the complexity and sensitivity of the issue. On the other side of the debate, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, in a recent address to lawmakers, highlighted the paramount importance of this matter for his nation. He stated that access to the sea is an existential matter for Ethiopia, a statement that underscores the significance Ethiopia attaches to this matter. The Prime Minister encouraged his fellow Ethiopians to engage in discussions related to the Red Sea, warning that neglecting this issue could jeopardize other national achievements, such as agricultural initiatives, taxation, and environmental programs. Unsurprisingly, the Prime Minister's remarks triggered passionate debates and speculations within Ethiopian and Eritrean online communities over the weekend. The issue has ignited fervent discussions and stirred emotions on both sides of the debate. However, Eritrea's response to this discourse has been firm and unyielding. In their statement, the Eritrean government reiterated its stance, stating, in the event, the government of Eritrea repeatedly reiterates that it will not, as ever, be drawn into such alleys and platforms. The GOE further urges all concerned not to be provoked by these events. This unyielding stance suggests that Eritrea is not inclined to engage in discussions on this topic and calls for restraint among all concerned parties. The debate over Ethiopia's access to the sea is an issue of utmost importance with significant political, economic, and strategic implications. It continues to be a source of tension and complex geopolitical maneuvering in the region with no immediate resolution in sight. We will closely monitor the developments related to this matter as they unfold. Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude, we want to express our gratitude for your engagement and viewership. Your support is invaluable to us as we strive to bring you comprehensive updates on important matters. We'd like to take a moment to remind you to stay tuned and continue following our channel for the latest news and updates on a wide range of topics. In a world that's constantly changing, staying informed is crucial, and our commitment is to keep you well informed with accurate and up-to-date information. We aim to be your reliable source for news, insights, and analysis, no matter where you are or what interests you. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we strongly encourage you to do so. By subscribing, you ensure that you won't miss out on any of our future updates, in-depth coverage, and thought-provoking content. It's a simple and convenient way to stay connected with us and to receive timely information that matters to you.